Hi everybody! Thank you for clicking on this video. Welcome back to my channel where I review, critique, and summarize scary children's stories. Today I'm going to be doing another scary picture book review for you guys. This is Fox. It's written by Margaret Wilde and illustrated by Ron Brooks. In this video I am going to summarize the book for you. I'm going to talk about the content of the book and give that a bit of a review. I'm going to tell you guys about the horror elements at play here as always. And finally I'm going to give you guys a few things to think about when it comes to a close reading of this book. So Fox is actually a picture book that is geared towards older children. It was published in 2000 by Allen and Unwin, an Australian press that actually recommends that this book be given to children ages 8 and up. There are some stronger horror elements in this book that might be too scary for kids who usually get picture books read to them. This is also quite a literary book, which I'm going to talk a little bit about later in the video. It might not be as engaging for younger, younger children, and more engaging for children that are ready to grapple with some of the deeper themes presented here. Fox tells the story of a magpie with a burnt wing that is rescued and befriended by a dog that happens to be blind in one eye. Both of these characters have a disability. Magpie mourns the loss of her ability to fly, but Dog assures her that she can actually sit on his back while he runs through the forest. This activity simulates flying for Magpie, and together her and Dog make something like a complete unit. Magpie is Dog's eyes, while Dog is Magpie's wings. Dog and Magpie develop a deep friendship, but one day a fox comes in to see them. Dog is very welcoming to Fox, but Magpie is quite wary of him. She can see him staring at her, always staring, and soon Fox comes up and whispers to Magpie, I can run faster than Dog leave dog and come with me. So a lot has actually already been said about Fox. This is a very celebrated and a very decorated book. I think more people need to know about it sort of outside the realm of children's literature studies. This might not be something that you would ordinarily pick up, but I'm going to tell you why I think you should. The first thing that I want to briefly discuss will be Margaret Wilde's writing. That's hard to say. I think the writing here is absolutely incredible. It's so literary and so precise. She uses language to create this very strong, very present, very affecting atmosphere of heat and dryness and desolation. But at the same time, she creates this beautiful friendship between dog and magpie, all against this backdrop of loneliness, and only in so many words. I think it's really amazing. At the heart of this story are these very base feelings of friendship, of love, loneliness, envy. It's got these very rich base themes that are packaged so nicely into this small story. It's truly wonderful storytelling. I have to say that even though this story is amazing, just as a standalone story, it really is the illustrations and the actual physical layout of this book, the way that the letters are put on the page, the way that the illustrations are put on the page. That's what really brings this book from here to here for me. First of all, I want to talk about the color scheme that Brooks uses. This whole book is rendered in these deep reds, oranges, grays, browns. These colors evoke a sense of heat, a sense of dryness, a sense of this very oppressive and harsh landscape. And in a sense there is this feeling of barrenness. Brooks does give us trees, he does give us some plants, but they're all kind of dry and dead looking. You get the sense that this is a very harsh and lonely landscape. The crosshatching and the very purposeful use of line gives weight to the scene and darkens the scene in a way that makes everything seem very heavy, very desolate, very lonely. And then look at Fox here. I mean, his color is similar to his surroundings, but he's got this bright sense of danger, of this flash of bright red. And look at his eyes. There's something about these eyes that really invite you to look at Fox, but in a really unpleasant way. This is an uncomfortable gaze to meet. Check out this page where Fox is demanding all of this space. He's demanding all of this attention. He seems so dangerous and almost snaky in the way that he moves, the way that his body is curled. It's quite freaky. You can tell that this character means harm. I have to say that for me there's not much that I would change about the illustrations here, but I did want to give you guys a bit of a contrasting opinion. I was talking to my friends about this book and one of 
my friends said that although she liked this story, the illustrations really weren't doing it for her. She mentioned that everything was a little bit too one tone, especially in this color. There wasn't enough contrast for her to find it really visually interesting. I totally respect that opinion and I think that it's true that for some readers there will not be enough color contrast here for it to be a really visually engaging experience. There isn't a ton of color contrast unless it is aiding the story in some way. For me, I find this book so visually engaging because of its relation to the story and because of this atmosphere that it's trying to convey. It does come down to a matter of taste as well. So next I want to talk about the layout of the illustrations and the lettering that's happening here. So I showed you guys this page before and you probably noticed that the lettering is vertical in the center of the double page spread here. This kind of thing is done throughout the whole of the book. And what I find really interesting is that when you're reading this, the book actually does require you to manipulate it in order to engage with the story. So doing a read through of this page, but Dog says, welcome, we can offer you food and shelter. Thank you, says Fox. I saw you running this morning. You looked extraordinary. Dog beams, but Magpie shrinks away. She can feel Fox staring at her burnt wing. What I like about this technique is that not only does it force you to look at the illustrations from different perspectives, but it actually forces you to go along with the book's own rhythm. This isn't a book that you can read really fast. You do have to do some manipulation to read the actual text. So for me, it makes this book really stand out as a kind of reading experience. All right, so now I wanna talk about the horror elements that are at play in this book. I think the strongest horror element is the way that Fox and the setting of the story are so closely tied together. Fox does represent this idea of premeditated cruelty, this idea that he is an agent of chaos that comes in particularly to destroy this beautiful friendship that Dog and Magpie have created. And the loneliness, the envy, all of this that resides in the character of Fox is actually evoked in the atmosphere of this story. For me, the presence of Fox in this story actually reflects the harsh nature of this landscape and this world that Dog and Magpie are existing in. It's as if the universe of the story itself is bent on hurting Dog and Magpie. They've already been hurt, but together they can find this sweet space of beauty and of friendship that exists against the backdrop of this terrifying and uncertain world. So when Fox comes in to unbalance Dog and Magpie's friendship, just by virtue of the fact that Fox himself is lonely, Fox himself feels empty, and the fact that Fox belongs nowhere and he loves no one represents the trials that the world presents to the safe spaces of beauty and friendship that we create. If we look quite deeply at the story, I think there is a kind of existential horror to be found. This is a setting that very much perpetuates the existence of Fox. It's really interesting. I watched a video on YouTube, and I'll link it in the description below, where the creator was very much interpreting Fox as a symbol for the Australian bushfires that devastate people's homes and devastate people's lives. And I think that's a really apt interpretation, considering that Fox is this very bright red Red color, these ideas of these dead trees, it does look like a fire has swept through this landscape. When it comes to discussing this book in the classroom or with your own kids, there are ideas here that you can sort of hang your hat on. I'm going to leave a link in the description below to a document that was actually provided by the publishers themselves to give people that want to discuss this book with children a little bit of something to think about. And there's also an incredible analysis at the end of the document, the final few pages, that I found to be so fascinating. This literary analysis of the language, of the illustrations. The author, Janet Anderson has actually said more in those few pages than I could really in this whole video. I think this book is just incredible and it's a story that I find to be not only quite scary and quite uncomfortable, but extremely moving, extremely poignant. So guys, pick this book up if you've never read it and if you've never heard of it, and especially if you have older children that might enjoy something like this. I can't say enough good things about it. I talked for so long that I'm actually losing my voice. So there you go.
All right, guys, so that is it for my review today. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. If you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of Fox or what you think of the idea of Fox if you haven't read it. Do you like books like this? Do you like books that are pretty literary, both for kids and for adults? And if you want to see more of me on here, go ahead and click subscribe. I'll be here doing reviews of scary kids books that your kid might love and that you might love too. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching again, and I'll see you next week.